Greetings class, I hope you're doing well. This week we're reading three stories um, from Jim Lahiri's book. We're reading A Real Derwin, Sexy, and Mrs. Sven. And um, two of these stories are incredibly sad, a bit tragic. And the middle story, it's kind of ambivalent. You can take what you will from it. But if we get into the real Derwin, a Derwin is a, a, a stairwell keeper in India. And the Derwin in this story is an elderly woman. She's 64. She's on hard times. She doesn't have a lot. And it seems like it's hard to say because the, we're told that she lies a lot. But um, she appears to have come from wealth. And now she's fallen. And she likes to remind herself of these better times, of her daughter's wedding and all the things she had, almost to escape the present moment. Because she doesn't want to think about the suffering she's going through. She's, she's remembering the life she had. And um, also she's an outsider, which is a common theme in Lahiri's work. Um, people looking for identity, people trying to fit in. They said she has a Bengali accent, so she comes from a different part of the country. So she doesn't quite fit in here. And so the story starts to change when people start accumulating more material. And it becomes a, a, a have and have nots type story where... Um, to the main character, the landowner, the the landlords, they they have, um, one gets a promotion and he brings home the these giant basins and they they don't and the, the wife starts complaining, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, and bore do all she's looking at all of this, <clears throat> and she doesn't know what to think, and then afterwards they decide to install a basin in the stairwell, and so while. They're installing this basin, modern technology, things for the people to have in the stairwell. Bori Mall has no place to go. She can't really clean the stairwell because it's occupied. And she is very poor. She's sleeping on dirty blankets. She's itchy throughout the whole story. She's suffering. And while they're installing these basins, she suffers more because she sleeps on the roof now rather than the stairwell. And it's raining. She's sleeping on her newspapers. It's pretty tragic what she's experiencing. And nobody really hears her story. They're more concerned about these basins than they are about human life. So because this place is so occupied, Bori Moss starts to just go into town. She's like, I don't want to be in the stairwell right now. I'd rather just be out and about. I want to get away from this. And near the end of the story, she's in the town and she feels a tug on her sari and she looks down and her life savings are gone, which is pretty tragic too, because if you, if you think about it, this woman is sleeping on newspapers. So, I mean, her life savings is probably nothing. She probably had nothing. And her skeleton keys were gone. So somebody stole her keys, which means they could have got into the stairwell. They, they may have not. We don't know those details, but when she returns to the stairwell um somebody stole the basin and all the tenants there they blame her because she wasn't there to guard it and they think that she told the robbers but there's no evidence for that there is no evidence to connecting her with a robbery to her but they're just upset because these basins are gone and they're looking for a scapegoat and the end, they kick her out and the sad this is a sad story but it ends in the only thing she has left is her broom. So they're saying they need a real Derwin, but the entire time she was a real Derwin because she was the one who was doing everything she could to take care of these people. So it's a very, very powerful story. And again, the idea here, and you'll see it a lot in Lahiri's work, is outsider. And if you're looking at um, the theme of nonconformity, these are people who don't know how to fit in or they're trying to fit in and they can't. Now the next story, Sexy is about an affair. Yes, an affair. And this story is so well written. I, I love the way she organizes her story. That it's very fascinating because she's it starts with the conversation. She's at work and her coworkers talking about an affair and she's like, how could they? <laughs> and then we find out on the next page that she herself is having an affair, Miranda. And she meets this guy in in a cosmetic shop and she's trying on perfume and makeup and um he comes up to her and he says that she looks beautiful. And they start to... Uh, actually, I think really the key part of that situation is on page 87. He says, part of your name is Indian. And he is Indian too. And she doesn't really have a lot of Indian friends. She doesn't really know her culture that well. 
and part of this story's identity because she starts to learn more about her culture through this person, but through also her neighbors. And so they have an affair. <laughs> and let's see. Um, on page 91, one of the core parts of the story, he treats her very, very well. He waits on her. He dotes on her. He ha he's, he's married. His wife is away. And while he's having this affair, um, he's treating this woman really nice and she's not used to that. So I think that's part of the big reason why she falls for him. One of the key parts in the story is on page 91 where he says, you're sexy. And this isn't something she's she's used to hearing. So she starts to fall for him. And I like these passages in this story where, um, like it start, starts on page 95. Apart from Laxmi and Deb, the only Indians whom Miranda had known were family in the neighborhood where she'd grown up, named the Dixits. And so they are Indian and they, they understand their culture. There, there's one line where they talk about an Indian goddess Kali, right? And she has no idea what they're talking about, but this through these people, she's learning more about her identity and who she is. And then the key part of the story is she babysits this boy. And this boy is very precocious. He's very smart. He's very intelligent. He's saying all these things she doesn't understand. And she's kind of fascinated by him, but he's kind of a strange boy as well. He tells her to put on his mother's clothing, lingerie, and she does. I don't know why, but she does. And then when he comes out, um, one of the more powerful parts of this story, he says on page 107, he says that you're sexy. And she looks at this boy and he says, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? And on page 107, it says it means at the very bottom, it means loving someone you don't know. And that's really the heart of the story because she's having this affair but she doesn't really know this guy. More importantly, she doesn't really know herself. So, and then she starts to realize it. And then things start to unravel for her. She starts to realize through <laughs> the variety of means, mainly videotapes she saw in this store of women dancing, um, Indian women dancing, that this guy she's having an affair with, his wife is beautiful. And he's, she's probably more beautiful than her. And so if she's more beautiful than her, then the odds of this guy sticking around is not good. Because she has this revelation, this epiphany. And then at the end of the story, it's not dramatic, it's not big, but I like the way it ends where um, <laughs> one weekend he wants to hang out with her, but it's snowing. Um, the next one, he wants to go to the movies, but she, she tells him no. And then it just kind of fades, and then she's back into her life again, and this re this affair is over. But I would say, if you're looking for identity, um, nonconformity, things like that, is she's living in this in this society that doesn't really represent her, and she's trying to find out who she is. She's trying to find her roots, but it's very very hard to do that in this culture, and she finds herself through revelations. But more importantly, the, <laughs> the story about love. I would say out of all three stories, I don't think this one has as strong connection as conformity as the other two stories. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you'll have a different interpretation of me. But in terms of our theme, it's not as strong as the other two stories, but it does have it. It does fit that. And then the last story, Mrs. Sen, I would say this one would be a great story to write about for our upcoming essay on nonconformity with Joomla Hiri. Um, it's about a boy. His name is Elliot, and his mother is looking for a babysitter, and she, she finds the wife of a professor to take care of him while she's not there. And so this woman, Mrs. Sin, I love her. I, I think she's cool. I, I feel for her, but she loves to cook. There's a, If you look at the imagery, there's a lot of dividing here. Like, she's chopping, cutting, dividing... And I think that's a great metaphor for her because she's kind of divided from this culture. She's from India and she's trying to fit in and it's just really, really hard. Um, she, Her husband's persuading her to drive, but she does not like to drive. In fact, she's not good at driving. And later in the story, she even says she hates driving. 
right? But, um, let's see. Uh, one thing I could always say about Lahiri, one of the things that I love about her work is food. Like, there is nobody better who talked about food. And I love the detail she has of food, this fish in this story, all of the things she cooks. She's constantly cutting and cooking. And Lahiri always does a really good job. I can't read her stories without getting hungry. Um, let's see. I want to get into the heart of this story. The heart of this story really happens with fish. So Mrs. Sen starts calling these grocery stores and she starts to realize, hey, I live next to the ocean. There's some good fish here and I should try it out. But the issue is she has no way to get there. And so she goes to, so she has to drive and she drives with this kid <laughs> and they go to a store and they get a fish, but she likes the fish whole. She likes to cut the fish into three separate pieces, make different meals out of it. And they're not used to that. They're like, why are you doing this? And she's like, this is what we do. This is a part of our culture. And so she has this lingering sensation for her past and her roots. And she's trying to hold on to it, but she has to cross this barrier of technology that she's not comfortable with, which is very, very powerful. Um, and then if we look at the character of Elliot, he's just enthralled by this woman. She, she, his mother is very, very distant. Um, one time in one part of the story, they go out to dinner. His mom just drinks the entire time. And it says in that passage that his mother was tasteless, which is a nice contrast with Mrs. Sin, who tastes everything. And later in the story, she says that you have a taste for life, too. So she's almost building his character and building his soul, even though she's a bit of a strange woman as well. So basically, after she tries out fish... She, she, her husband also makes her drive. And while they're driving, they just get in a big fight. And she says, I hate driving. I don't want to drive anymore. I don't want to drive ever again. And so what she does is she still has this obsession with fish. And so she calls this store and she finds out, you know, she ha they have fish. And she, she chooses a different plot. So she decides to take the bus there. Her and Elliot just take, take this bus because she loves to cook so much. And technically, she just wants to make her, her husband happy. But I think cooking is a way of escaping for her and to hold on and not have to, to deal with this new life that that she she's in. It's almost an escape for her as well. But they go to this store on this bus and they bring home this fish in this bag and people start to complain about it. And um, the bus driver looks at Ellie and says, this woman cannot bring this fish on the bus in the future because um, custom, um, passengers are complaining. And there's one line that I, one paragraph that I really, really like here. There's a lot, actually. But I love how she's not really able to get into this culture. There's a nice paragraph where the TV's on, but she's not watching it. And she has all this technology around her, but she's not really tuning into it. She she doesn't want to accept these changes. She wants to hold on to the life that she had. So it's, she, she can't conform. She's not able to because this world that she lives in has so much technology and so many things around her that her mind can't process it. She's in culture shock. And so at the end of this story, they drive to go get some fish. They get in an accident. Um, it was, it could have been a worse accident. Nobody really got severely hurt. But after that, Elliot's mom decides that maybe Mrs. Sen is not the best person to watch him. And the story essentially ends there. It's kind of a flat line. I, I do like it. It says he was fine. Um, I like the ending. It's not as, as strong as their other endings. But essentially, this is the last story reading for this week. And again, I think that the second and third story have have more of what we're looking for in terms of the theme of our class. I would say I love all three of those stories. They're, they're really, really good. They're powerful. They're so well written and carved. And I love the structures of it. Like, like I love the mentioning of an affair and then, and then we're into the affair, but we're not really into the affair until maybe the fourth or fifth line or fourth or fifth page. So I love the way she layers things like a cake. I think she's such a great writer. But I would say if you're looking at our theme... I would focus more on a real Derwin and Mrs. Sin.
And thanks for listening. We have three more stories next week, and then we'll be finished with Jhumpa Lahiri. I hope you guys are enjoying her work. Thank you.